to the class of 2020, I would say we have something in common. This is your first year as students at DePauw. It's my first year as president of DePauw. And we're going to meet in these stuffy settings every now and then. And when we do, we both have to understand that we, have, we each have a job to do. It's, it's your job to listen. It's, it's my job to speak. Um, I'm going to commit to trying to finish my job before you finish yours uh, every time we come together. You're going to learn a lot in your time at DePauw, but you learned one lesson this morning already. I wish that we could have welcomed you here in a beautiful 68 degree day with blue skies, no humidity, and no rain. And uh, that's not what we ordered, <clears throat> or that is what we ordered, but that's not what we got. And yet I saw something really important today and I hope you noticed it. You see, when I came around and everyone was unloading cars and running through campus and just standing and caught in that downpour, it was a wonderful moment. People were laughing, they were smiling, they were coming together as a team to get something done. It was fantastic and it's a valuable lesson. Life is not about avoiding the storms. The storms are inevitable. Life is about learning how to dance in the rain. And today, you did that, Papa. I'm very proud of you. So, welcome. Welcome to DePaul. Students, this is a meaningful moment for you and for your parents. Mom and dad, grandparents and guardians, let's, let's start with you. Congratulations, you did it. All the things you dreamed about for your son or daughter begin to come true today. Some of you had this perfect day envisioned for a long time. Some of you are probably surprised that you survived the hard days and sleepless nights necessary to get you here, but you did. Welcome. Some parents have done this before. Some will do it again after today, and for others, this is your one and only shot. On a personal note, it was on this very stage six years ago that it suddenly dawned on me that because my daughters are triplets, they had better choose the same school or <laughs> schools whose calendars don't li line up or I'm doomed. So parents, congratulations, you did it. And let me say that as we have gotten to know your sons and daughters and learn of their accomplishment and potential, we have already begun becoming as proud of the students in this room as you are. So thanks for entrusting them to us. We won't let you down. You have left us big shoes to fill and we will do our very best. Students, you may or may not have already realized this, but your parents have gone from worrying about you falling out of your crib while learning to sleep by yourself to worrying about falling down while learning to walk, falling off your bicycle while learning to ride, falling out while learning to make friends, falling behind while learning to read, falling back while learning how to be you, to falling through the holes in the safety net that they tried to build around you. To their credit, they never have and they never will stop worrying about you. To your credit, you have fallen out, down, off, back, and behind, but have managed somehow to get back in, up, on, ahead, and through each time. And that's good because you are going to need that grit, that persistence, that perseverance to thrive in the years ahead. So here, with you as their witness, I have told your folks that we will do our very best. I have set their expectations of us. Our faculty are expected to deliver a world-class education to you, and they will. They always do. Our staff is expected to assist you into living and learning on your own and staging your entrance into the real world. They always have. They always will. Everyone here is committed to your success. You can expect that of us. What should we expect of you? A single thought comes to mind. We should expect to see your very best, your A game in everything you do. Sure, you could just mail it in. You could give less than your best. And what would that cost you to sleep in, to miss a class? to skip the assignment. What could it cost? And here's the important part, and maybe the most important thing I can tell you. It would cost you only one thing. 
it would cost you your reputation. Those poor choices will only be charged against your reputation. That thing that it takes you a lifetime to earn and a split second, a single poor choice to destroy. In the end, your reputation is all you have for the world to see and to judge you by. For what will you give it up? An extra hour's sleep? One more beer? One fewer assignment? You are judged by your choices. Commit today to making the right choices, not just for the current you, but for the future you. You are entering into a magical time. Think about it. Four years ago, you were worried about fitting into high school. Four years from now, you'll be worried about fitting into grad school or med school or even scarier, the real world. So we have these four years. You will hear me refer to these as the 800 days. The 800 days that you are on our campus or the 600 days. The 600 days that you will be in our classrooms. Either way, not much time to set you up for the life well lived. We have big work to do. We'll do it together. You are also entering into a magical place. DePaul University has been welcoming students like you to the life of the mind for 179 years. Here are a few pictures. The first pictures of you as students at DePaul. And here are a few of those that came before you. 1990, 1970, 1910, 1890, 1850, 1837. Amazing, isn't it? Your institution, DePauw University, has been changing lives since your great, 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 great grandparents walked this earth. And let me share with you something perhaps even more amazing. You may not recognize these photos, but I can help. That is Brett Baer, student, and Brett Baer, Fox News anchor. This is John Fort, student and John Fort, CNBC host. Eliza Villanueva Beard, student. Eliza Villanueva Beard, CEO of Teach for America. Brad Stevens, DePaul basketball player. Brad Stevens, coach of the Boston Celtics. Barbara Kingsolver, student and Barbara Kingsolver, award-winning novelist. James B. Stewart, student. James B. Stewart, Pulitzer Prize winning author. Joe Allen, student. Joe Allen, astronaut. Vernon Jordan, serving a vice president at DePauw. That's Vernon as a waiter and Richard Nixon. And then Vernon Jordan choosing a vice president for our country. That's Al Gore and Bill Clinton. This is Fred Murad, student. Fred Murad, Nobel Prize winning chemist. Joe Flummerfelt, student conducting the DePaul Choir, and Joe Flummerfelt, as Leonard Bernstein called him, the greatest choral conductor in the world conducting the New York Philharmonic. The list goes back and on and on, and with you, it will go forward on and on. What will your picture say to the students when we show the class of 2050 what you have accomplished? Walt Whitman said, the powerful play goes on, and you 
will contribute a verse. We have a pretty strong songbook here at DePauw. What will your verse be? So how will you change the world? I want to end with a, co- with a quote from Calvin Coolidge. I can't imagine better words to send you into your 800 days and to the world ahead. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Welcome to DePauw, this magical place at this magical time in your life. Welcome to your 800 days.